Hey, I'm Alex and today we're going to work on the file extensions problem from PSA to one of C50's introduction to programming with Python. Let's quickly take a look at the problem description and then start setting up our file system and implementing our solution. Even though Windows and Mac OS sometimes hide them, most file files have file extensions, a suffix that starts with a period at the end of their name. For instance, file names with uh, for GIFs end with .gif, and file names for JPEGs end with .jpg, uh, .jpg or .jpeg. When you double click on the file to open it, your computer uses its file extension to determine which program to launch. Web browsers, by contrast, um, rely on media types, formerly known as meme types, uh, to determine how to display files that live on the web. When you download a file from a web server, that server sends an HTTP header along with the file itself indicating the file's media type. For instance, the media type for a GIF is image slash GIF, and the media type for a JPEG is image slash JPEG. To determine the media type for a file, a web server typically looks at the file's extension, uh, mapping one to the other. In a file called extensions.py, implement a program that prompts the user for the name of a file and then outputs the file's media type if the file's name ends case insensitively in any of these suffixes dot gif dot gp jpg dot jpeg dot png dot pdf dot txt dot zip if the file's name ends with some other suffix or has no suffix at all output application slash octet stream instead which is a common default okay so that was um quite a lot of information um, but I believe that the problem description, like the, the expectations are actually um, relatively simple. All we have to do is read the name of the file, then take the extension, which starts from the dots and everything afterwards, and define its media type. So let's uh, begin by setting up our file system, creating a folder, and then writing our code. First, I'm already inside, okay, I'm not inside of my PSET1 tutorial folder, so let's do this. So change directory to PSET1 tutorial, tutorial. And then I'm going to create a new directory, which is going to be called extension. So, so MK, I'm mkdir, uh, make a new directory um, for extensions, extensions. Once I have created my folder, I can go inside of it so change directory to extensions and once i'm in i can create my file so i can say code um, extensions dot pi this is the name of my file and now i can already see it here okay um, i think i'm going to uh, to use a comment to just note uh, the media type of every single extension that's mentioned here. So I'm going to copy these. I'm going to paste them here, comment them. And um, here I'm going to use this website to look for uh, their respective extensions. So for GIF, we have GIF image slash GIF. Um, although, didn't they have another? Yeah, it's image slash GIF. Okay. Then we have JPG. JPG. Let's look for it. We have it here. So both JPG and JPEG should return image slash JPEG. So, um, okay. They have the same media type. Then we have PNG. PNG. There we go, image slash png. So they're pretty much the same. Um, we just add the media type image beforehand. Um, PDF, this one is probably going to be different. PDF is application PDF. Um, I'm doing this quite quickly, but it's the same operation repeated um, basically seven times. So that's why um, I'm, 
I'm just rushing through it really quickly. But this is just basic research. This is not coding itself. So uh, then we have txt text slash plane. By the way, the, the way you can search like this in a web page, just in case you don't already know this, is by hitting Command and F on the, on Mac and Control and F on Windows and just writing whatever you're looking for in the text box and then you can um, find it more easily. So the last one is zip. Zip is application slash zip. Okay. And everything else is, let's see, they had instructed us to write application octet stream. Okay, so we have all of the extensions. Now everything we're left to do is create, okay, let me actually clear the terminal. So what we have to do is first take the user's input, right? So we are prompting for file name. Let me say file name equals um, input. So I'm asking the user for input and I can enter some kind of a prompt to make it more explicit what information I need. So I can say file name and then a colon indicating that I'm expecting the user to enter this file name. Okay, once we have our file name, we would like to check, to start checking the extensions. So the first option is that the extension is .gif, right? Um, by the way, there is a more efficient way to approach this. In fact, there are multiple more efficient ways than the one I'm going to show you. But since you are beginners, or at least that's what we assume, um, if you're taking CSFT's introduction to programming with Python, I'm going to use the most intuitive, most straightforward approach, although it's not optimal. Uh, if you're interested in seeing another one, then feel free to enter my Discord server um, and hit me up. Um, and I'm going to, to show you how I would personally solve this. But for now, we're just trying to, um, to use the basics. So our first option is that the file na name ends with .gif, for instance, uh, test.gif. So if you remember from the last problem that was solved from this p set, um, actually we don't need <laughs> the, those braces uh, in Python. If you remember from the last tutorial I uploaded, there is this method called ends with, which is exactly what we need, right? Because we want to check if the file name, file name ends with, ends with, it's written the same way that it's pronounced by humans. Um, so ends with, dot gif um, like this then i would like to output print i would like to output image slash gif right we have it up there the next option else if or in python syntax it's elif the file name ends with and now here we have two options. The first one is that it ends with jpg, so dot jpg. And now we can use the or operator to check for the second one as well, because note is that both jpg and jpeg result in the same um, output, which is image slash jpg. So I can say if the file ends with dot jpg or the file name, ends with what? If it ends with jpeg, then we would like to output print image slash j, uh, sorry, slash jpeg, right? It's the same for both extensions. And in the same way, we continue with the third option. So if the file name is not dot G, dot gif if it's not dot jpg or dot jpeg we would like to move on to the next one which is dot png right so elif or else if the file name ends with png dot png like this we would like to print image 
um, slash png, right? It's pretty much the same. Um, and please note that indentation is very important. If I bring this here, then it's not going to work. It has to be indented because it means if, uh, like, if the statement on line 14, let's say, is true, then execute line number 15. But if it's not true, move on to the next line with the same indentation. So move on to line 16, not 15. So whatever is identity here, whatever is like one tap to the right, is the code that's only going to be executed if the if statement above is true. So if this is true, we're going to print image slash jpeg. But if it's not true, we're going to skip the next line or the next multiple lines we could have and continue with line 18. So I hope that's clear for you. And now we continue. The next one is .pdf. So if, um, if the file name ends with pdf, uh, sorry, .pdf to be more precise, then we would like to print um, application slash pdf. And now we continue. Elif, the file name ends with what? What's our next extension? It's txt, right? If it ends with txt, we would like to print and we take a look at a corresponding, um, sorry, media type, which is text slash plain. And we continue, we move on to the last one actually, or the second to last, it depends on how you look at it. If you consider this one as well, it's the second to last, which is dot zip. So if the file name ends with um, dot zip, we would like to print um, application slash zip. And the last thing is, if the type, um, sorry, if the extension is anything else, it's not included in the first seven extensions, then I would simply like to output application slash octet stream. So I can copy it from here because it's a bit longer than the others. And I can say else if all of the previous if statements uh, have been proven to be wrong or false, if all of these result in false, then I'm going to come here on line 27 and print application slash octet stream. So once more, we execute these in a linear manner. For, we, we check for this one first. If it's correct, we print this and we skip all the other um, if statements. However, if the first one is false, we go move on to the second one. If the second one is false as well, we move on to the third one. If the third one is wrong, we move on to the fourth one. And if all of these are wrong, if all of these are false, we enter the last one, the else option, and we print application slash octet stream. So that should be our solution. Um, let's test this now. Uh, let's take a look at what tests we have. I think we might need a little modification here. So um, how to test? First, we want to write happy.jpg and we expect to see image slash jpeg. Uh, we see one problem, is it from this one? Seems like we have an error somewhere. Okay, we don't need this colon here, right? We only need it when we're using the if construction. With print, we do not need a colon. Okay, so let's now test it. So we can say Python and then the name of the file extensions dot pi. We enter the name happy.jpg and we see that we've successfully outputted image slash jpeg. Now let's test the second option. We have documents.pdf. Okay, we run the same um, commands. Now we enter document.pdf and we receive the media type application slash pdf. Okay, be sure to test each of the other file formats, vary the casing of your inputs. 
Okay, now that's something that we haven't previously taken into consideration, right? Uh, because we care about the case. If I enter, if I run the same um, program and I write document.pdf in capital, then we would receive octet stream, but we would like to, to take this input and uh, to treat it case insensitively, right? So we don't care about the case, it's still PDF, so we should uh, expect to see application slash PDF. So how can we treat it case insensitively? Well, the easiest way is to just convert it to lowercase in the beginning. So take the user's input and convert it to lowercase. So now if I rerun this program and use uppercase PDF, we successfully output application slash PDF. And the last thing we should test is if we accidentally, uh, accidentally add spaces on either side of the input. So let's come back and try to use the same thing, but with a couple of spaces. Now we see application slash octet stream. But why? We should, we should be able to see application PDF, right? It doesn't matter that we have spaces. Well, the reason it currently does this is because we're testing if it ends with dot .pdf, if these are like the last couple of characters in our string. But since we have some spaces afterwards, we, we could not recognize this and that's why we're outputting application slash octet stream. So the easiest way to prevent this is by using the strip method. I have already shown this, that's why I'm not getting into much detail. We have used this a couple of times, maybe in all of the problems we've solved so far. So just to recap, we take the user's input, we convert it into lowercase, and then we remove any leading white space. So now if I refresh, I use document.pdf and uh, add a couple of spaces at the end, we are st still able to see application slash PDF. Okay, seems like we are done. Let's now run CS50, uh, sorry, check 50. Um, to you ensure that all of the tests have passed. And we can see that all of the tests are green, so we've successfully solved the problem. Um, if you're looking for a more elegant solution without much repetition, again, feel free to message me on Discord or any other social media, but um, Discord is usually the most convenient for me. However, if you don't have an account there, feel free to uh, message me on any other uh, social media platform. That was everything for today's tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and I'm going to see you in the next one.